this is the Monday Mindset Podcast, where we share things of interest to us and hopefully to you. So let's get started with episode number 49. And this week, it's Daisy's turn to share something with all of us. Daisy, what do you have? Well, Terry, this week, I followed a suggestion from somebody in my Facebook group. She suggested I look this guy up on YouTube, which I did. And I thought he sounded very interesting. So as so often happens with YouTube, you get another video suggested and they suggested a podcast where he was interviewed. So I went and listened to that. And that was obviously talking a bit more about the technique that he practices. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And this podcast is not one that I've heard of. It's by somebody called Stefan Spencer. And the podcast is called Get Yourself Optimized. And this is episode number 231 called Release Trauma Through TRE with David Berselli. David Berselli is an international author, presenter and trainer in the areas of trauma intervention, stress reduction and resiliency and recovery training. He's also the creator of TRE, which stands for Tension and Trauma Release Exercises. Or time-restricted eating. Or time-restricted eating. (laughs) Don't muddy the waters, Terry. (laughs) So TRE is supposed to release stress and trauma from the body through a set of exercises that balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. And as a little aside, towards the end of the podcast, Stefan asked him, what's the difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic? And he says a really good way to remember is to think of parachute. So the parasympathetic is the the side of the nervous system is for calming you down. So I thought that was a good little tip if, like me, you always forget what the, the difference is between them. So it also seemed like a good follow-on from your episode last week, specifically Caroline Leaf's suggestion to take some time out to decompress before embarking on her five steps with her process that she talked about. Um, You mentioned doing something like breathing exercises or tapping, things like that. And this sort of fits into that camp. So it seemed to fit quite nicely as a follow-on from your episode. So what is this TRE? What's the basis? David Baselli, he describes it simply as when you start to shake from fear, anxiety, nerves, etc. He maintains that this is your nervous system deliberately acting to calm itself down. The body shakes itself when it gets overstimulated. And he says the trouble is we've tried to suppress this as a general rule. We kind of tend to see it as a sign of weakness, but actually it's a healthy mechanism. And so his system, his TRE system is a series of seven simple exercises which artificially activate that shaking mechanism. And the idea behind it is that you shake out the stress that wasn't allowed to shake out at the time of the stressful event. It's kind of similar to shivering, he says, but it's it's just about stress and tension rather than temperature, but it's the same mechanism in the body. So this TRE and the exercises that you go through is a self-activated process designed to release physical tension in the muscles as well as the neuro-emotional connection that goes between the brain and the body. So he says, we tend to shake because the nervous system is elevated And this shaking is our body's way of down-regulating the nervous system back to a calmer state. So how can we apply this? It says it's a way to release trauma and tension that's trapped in your body, both physical and emotional, from anything from mild stresses to long-term trauma. And it can be quite a simple process, more of an immediate physical relaxation technique to these mild sort of daily stresses to something that helps bring 
trauma to the surface. So psycho-emotional connections that can surface during this release process. And that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. And he goes on later to talk about that maybe it's better done with um, a practitioner who can help guide you through it. But really, he talks about this as being something that you can empower yourself with, that it's very simple exercises that you can do at home. And he actually has them all on a, a YouTube presentation where you can follow along. So he puts it out for free so you can try it yourself at home. And of course, I meant to have tried it before I recorded this episode, but I haven't yet, but I am going to (laughs) this week. So I shall report back. Uh, The podcast host, Stefan, brings up a phrase, the issues are in the tissues. And David Baselli talks about how The basis really for this is when a traumatic event gets stored physically in your body as well as emotionally. This is what he maintains anyway. This is where it gets slightly, I guess, into woo-woo territory and that you end up holding the tension somewhere. You can probably think of a typical physical tension type response that you have to things that happen to stresses that happen like maybe you clench your jaw or you get knots in your stomach and what he's saying is that you have these stresses these events and you end up creating tension in your body but that gets sort of held in there gets held in the the memory physically in your body I guess is a way to look at it. And he maintains there is never a stressful, tension-filled, traumatic event that does not affect both the brain and the body. And he's very much into the relationship between the brain and the body. And, you know, he says that you, you can't affect one without the other. And one of the things that he seems to be really big about is restoring the balance between what he sees as a real disconnect between cognitive and body therapies. He says they they need to be brought much more back together and integrated to get people to a much better place when it comes to healing from trauma. He says cognitive therapies can access the body and vice versa. For example, starting with cognitive therapy, so talking about something upsetting can lead to the physical release of crying. Starts in the brain, triggers an emotion, triggers a physical response of crying. And he says that it can work the other way, that body therapies can access the psycho-emotional issues as well. But he's not trying to put one over the other, but more impress the importance of integrating the two for a truly holistic healing process. And he says, in general, there's been this tendency to undervalue the body therapies and look at the body as something difficult to control that it's rather the mind that control everything. And um, the phrase mind over matter came to my mind when he said that. And he says that we don't actually need the memory to heal the trauma. He says you often don't have, and he uses the example of uh, soldiers, he says that often don't even have the memories and so they they can't access them. And he he deals a lot with um, PTSD with soldiers. And he says, so so they can have actually been unconscious when they go through the traumatic event, but the body experienced it and he's saying this is what comes out through his um, TRE process but he says it's very important with any kind of therapy he talks about what an individual's issues are and where they are at when it comes to choosing the best therapy modality for them he says everyone comes to the healing process from different starting points so he uses an example that somebody might come to him and they say they say they're tired of talking and so body work is a good fit for them and you might get someone you know in the reverse they might be scared of the idea of of body work and and so a more talking therapy might be more appropriate so i really liked his approach that he he's not trying to force his approach on on somebody he starts with the individual and where they're at and choosing the best therapy for them 
He spent a lot of time in war-torn countries and saw shaking from fear all the time and experienced it himself. He came from a position of thinking that shaking should be controlled, suppressed, medicated, but it wasn't an option where he was working. And he discovered from his own experience that not only did no harm come to him from shaking, but that it felt quite good if he let it happen. And so he started wondering, he started questioning, well, could it actually be helping in some way rather than being a sign of a damaged nervous system? So with treating his own PTSD, he realized that cognitive behavioral therapy just wasn't enough. And so he started exploring different um, bodywork type therapies alongside the cognitive therapies to help release the trauma from his body. And that's where he created the TRE exercises. And so it was born out of looking at other bodywork therapies like Tai Chi and yoga. And he's particularly interested in the grounding element of exercises like that and they also needed to be very simple to do as I mentioned before there's a video that can take you through the exercise as I usually do with things like that I've watched the video I just haven't done it yet (laughs) but I'm going to so from a practical point of view what happens is you lightly stress your body in various positions which artificially triggers these tremors this shaking The assumption was that the tremors would stop when the the stressor was slowly released. But that's not what he found, that the tremors continued and moved throughout the body, looking, he describes it as, looking for areas of tension that you're holding and that your body wants to release. So he says, the cycle is that the body reduces the tightness in the muscle. and This releases any psycho-emotional issues that were connected to why you created that tightness in the first place. And he says, basically, you know, give it a go. It's very easy to just try it and see what it feels like. And this is where he does have a word of caution. He said, if it does seem to feel really scary, or if you feel, you know, flooded with emotion, then this is uh, maybe an indication that you would be better working through it with somebody else. But he says, otherwise, just, you know, be a bit curious about it. If it feels a bit weird, or if it feels quite nice, you know, just practice it a couple of times a week and see if you get benefit from it. He says trauma often leaves people feeling disempowered over their body. And he wants people to feel empowered. Hence, with the simple techniques that they can do at home and hopefully feel like they regain some control over their body again. This is the problem with with our lives these days, and we're all familiar with this and we've, we've spoken about it before, that a lot of us are just going through chronic stress. And so the sympathetic response dysregulates everything and creates secondary illnesses. And he is saying it's not really the stress itself that is the problem, but the things that constantly get dysregulated in our body by the stress. And so the whole point of of these TRE exercises is to downregulate the sympathetic nervous system and put us back into a healthy state. And he says, we know the value of things like vibrating massage chairs, for example. They're relaxing, reduces tension in the muscles, and that reduces stress levels. TRE, he says, is simply a way of using your body's mechanisms rather than machines. So actually he's saying there's nothing that weird and shocking about it. It's, it's just using your own body. And so there you have it. Something to try. It sounds like an interesting approach, and at some level, I think I understand or can relate to why it should be effective. Like you said, it's the the trembling can actually kind of shake out the stored tension mm. that the body is holding onto from past traumas. The piece that I wonder about, and I like that you said 
if it feels too maybe triggering for someone that they might need to do it in a safer environment where maybe it's with a coach or a therapist or someone so that they know if they're triggered that there's someone who can help help them kind of come out of that state. Hmm. Because for some people, our body response, and I think you said this, Daisy, our body response can make us think something is happening. So, for example, um, if we start crying, we then interpret that means I'm sad. So, if I start trembling, I might interpret this means I'm unsafe, this means I'm scared. Mm. And so, I can see for some people, the activity of doing the trembling might accomplish exactly what he said. And I can see for some people that it, depending on their past, that it could actually almost make them believe they are in a traumatic situation at that time. Mm. It's funny. It's one of those things where, and I I did watch um, a few snippets of people doing it and it's very kind of it is odd looking I've got to say it's odd looking it's one of those things that sort of makes me think of a few things that I think oh yeah that makes sense like so when he was talking about how you come at it from a cognitive angle so if you think of something that triggers an emotion and you start crying so you produce a physical response right? And that kind of, that is a release of tension, right? It's your body's way of releasing that. It's a physical response. And then he talks about how triggering a physical doing this body work, how it can basically work back the other way. Mm -hmm. That's kind of potentially what you were saying just then, because that's, so I avoid, for example, I avoid films now that I know are going to make me cry Mm -hmm. there are films that I can tell from the write-up that's going to have that impact I won't watch them because that happens to me so I'll be watching a film and it's not something that that triggers any particular you know experience in me that's that's triggering some kind of emotion that is making me sad from reliving a memory or something like that but just the act of crying, of a film making me cry, puts me in that state where I can then be in a real downer of a mood for maybe the next day, maybe the next week. And so it's, mm-hmm. you know, I could see how it could work back the other way mm-hmm. by doing something that artificially created a physical response, which is basically what you're doing if you watch a sad film that it can work back the other way. So that kind of, that I like the logic of it. It made sense to me. And I think, you know, what we're touching on is that it's one of those strategies that it probably works great for some people. It's probably very effective. Mm. And for other people, does kind of contradictory response. So even your example, I think, is a great one that for some people, even though that film doesn't tap what they're holding on to pain about, It allows them to access pain and sadness, and so they can release it. It can be cathartic for them. Mm, Whereas for you, it doesn't feel positively cathartic. It feels like it kind of drags you to a more depressed or feeling down state. And so I think it's just one of those things. it's It's not going to be everyone's best strategy but it probably is really effective for some people. And the only way I think we'll really know is to do it and to find out for ourselves, does this strategy work well for me or does this kind of take me in the other direction? And I think that will really depend on people's ability to kind of read their physical signaling. I'd be really curious to learn more about you know, his stance on, is it more effective for certain traumas, less effective for other traumas? Just from my experience as a therapist, sometimes things that I wouldn't even know could be triggering for someone could take them to a completely different place. Mm. So I'm really fascinated by this just to see who it works for, when it works, when it isn't indicated. 
yeah, it's a really interesting concept. And it's funny, actually, that that is something that they spoke about at length, about how different techniques work for different people and that you're more receptive for things working at different times. Mm -hmm. He, the podcast host, used an example about how his own experience with, I think he, he tried EMDR and it did nothing for him. He tried EFT, a tapping technique, and one 40 minute session had a huge impact on him. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into it, but the timing and the environment, and they, they talked about this was ripe for it to work well for him. And he got his daughter to do the same thing to try and get over her fear, fear of flying. And it didn't work mm -hmm. well for her at all. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, they were acknowledging that different modalities of treatment work for different people. But also, it depends where on mm -hmm. your healing journey you are and what, you know, which direction you're coming at it from. So I think that's, yeah, that's spot on. That is fascinating. And I think it opens it up. I think oftentimes people think there's going to be one modality that should work across mm -hmm. all people in all situations. And that's just not the case. And so anytime I think we hear about a strategy or a modality of treatment, my hope is we can be open to it and exploring it, whether it's something that might be of value to us and not hold on to it too tightly if it doesn't work for us because there are other options. So I'm glad that you shared this one and I'll be curious to learn more about it. Yes, and I tend to be a natural born skeptic. I've definitely thought about things like exploring EFT, tapping type things, and I've never really got around to it. And so this one, I'm definitely approaching it as a bit of a, a skeptic, especially after watching some of the videos and thinking, gosh, yes, add on to that. It looks very strange. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to watch his video where he takes you through these seven simple exercises and see what happens, and I'll report back. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I hope everyone can take this in and maybe think about if it's a strategy that might be useful for them. And I hope everyone has a great week. And you too, Daisy. Have a great week. Bye.